Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Andela Global Web Webinar. At Andela, brilliant minds and companies come together to build the future. We're inspired by those who help to lead and enlighten us in an ever-changing world. As part of our drive to unlock the potential in our community, we are hosting a monthly series of webinars, inviting some of the world's most exciting leaders and technologists to share their knowledge and experience. From innovation to career advice and guidance, these industry stories aim to spark insightful conversations and empower technologies as they grow your career. But first, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Oscar Terrazas. I'm leading Andela's talent market in the efforts throughout the American continent uh, from Guadalajara in Mexico as a, as a global company that we are. And today I'm going to be your host. Please reach out to me via the chat tool and I'll, uh, I will be reading all of your comments. Also, I recommend you to, you to use the Q&A question, uh, the Q&A the Q tool down below to leave your questions so we can share that with our fine panel for them to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. But before we, uh, we go to what brought us here, it is important to talk about some community guidelines in here. So first, treat others as you will treat them in real life. Not because we are online, we don't have to be uh, uh, respectful of everyone. Also be tolerant towards other opinions. Respectfully disagree when opinions do not align. Respect the privacy and personal information of other members and participants and communicate with courtesy and respect. Do not make personal attacks on other community members. Use defamatory remark, remarks or make false statements against others. Do not post prejudiced comments or profanity. Do not bully or make inflammatory remark on other community members. Any of those actions will not be tolerated and immediate action will be taken. Please report any, any behavior of this type by a direct message to me. Having said this, like, like we can go to what we are here for. This is our agenda for, for today. Uh, we're, going, we're going to be no more than 60 minutes, perhaps a few more just to say bye. And we will try to, at the end, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. But first, we're going to be talking a bit, I promise, just a bit about Andela. And then we're going to be talking about our panelists. We're going to be introducing to the, uh, them to you. We're going to be talking about, uh, we will have our, our, our panel, then Q&A, uh, time for Q&A, like five minutes before we wrap up, and final remarks at the end. So what is Andala? Andala is a marketplace that, marketplace that connects great companies with better vetted global talent. We are backed up by top venture capital firms that are helping us to fulfill our mission to connect, to connect brilliance with opportunity. We are trusted by leading brands such as GitHub, Cloudflare, Logitech, among others, and the list is growing. Also, we are, we, are, we are trusted by learning partners of the size and cloud of Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, helping us create amazing content for you to grow your careers. So why Andela? As uh, our mission, we are here to help connecting brilliance with opportunity, irrespective of race, gender, and geography, offering long-term opportunities, networking, learning initiatives, compensation, and career coaching of flexibility. Our career opportunities listed in our platform are engagements for over 18 months, 40 hours per week, hand by hand with, core, with the core engineering team of the company you will be working with. And especially it's gonna, they, those, those opportunities are time zone aligned of the, of the time zone that of your preference. So, Joining the Andela Talent Network is a clear and comprehensive path of three simple steps, yet challenging enough. An English proficiency test, a problem solving, theoretical knowledge and soft skills assessment, and a consultative call with one of our experts for optimizing your profile. Go to andela.com and click the join button to get started. Like, it's as simple as just filling out these questions, and this will unlock you a realm of possibilities and a new way of life. 100% remote ever. Great companies, great compensation. Submit your application, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So we talk about what we had to talk. We talk about Andela. Now, uh, let me introduce you, our five panelists. 
uh, that are giving away their time and brains for us to poke into the experiences. So let, why don't we just start with Hannah? Hannah, she lives in Kenya. I see a lot of people joining from Kenya. She's a software engineer. Uh, she's a, she has a great story on how to go from a non-technical position to learn to code and unlocking amazing opportunity for her. Hannah, please, uh, can you turn on your video uh, and your microphone so you can introduce yourself in 30 seconds to the audience? Um, thank you, Oscar. Thank you for that introduction. As you've had, my name is Hannah Onkoye, based in Nairobi, Kenya. I joined Andela in 2019, and right now I'm with a partner um, co company called Acast, where we're working on the mobile app for the podcasting version of the app. Uh, sadly, if you go to Google Play Store, you wouldn't find it right now. But yeah, that's what I've been working for in the past year. Uh, and in my free time, um, I like to try out recipes and baking. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Thank you very much, Hannah. Now, uh, let's say let's say hi to Rizwan. He's from Lahore, Pakistan. He's an engaged software engineer, focuses on QA, and also is an amazing community leader in Lahore. He will tell us about how communities help us in achieving our full potential and the potential of our ecosystem. Please, uh, Rizwan, your microphone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Oscar, for giving me this opportunity. So I'm Rizwan from Lahore, and I have about 14 years of experience in the field of software testing and quality assurance. I joined Andela last year in September, and my journey with Andela in the last eight months has been amazing and beyond my imagination. And uh, other than technical side, I like to spend time with my family and with my kids. So that's all about me. Awesome. Thank you, Rizwan. I really appreciate your time and effort in, doing, in putting this together. Well, now let me introduce you to Zahid, our friend from Nigeria. He's an agile project manager, and he's very enthusiastic about many other very interesting things. And he's going to tell us about non -technical, how non-technical roles can also take advantage of global opportunities. An intro from you, Zahid, please. Thank you very much, Oscar, for that warm introduction. Um, I'm Zahid Badra from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I joined Andela in um, February of this year. Um, and um, basically, I work with um, one of Angela's clients, uh, uh, Health Tech, and I help in managing data science and data engineering projects. Uh, Angela has been a wonderful experience for me. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sahid. You're amazing. And last but not least, help me welcome Thierry, Thierry from Nigeria as well. He's a software developer and a proud member of the Andela Talent Network. He's going to tell us about how to use Andela Talent Network to leverage your career as a technologist. But I think I've talked too much now. Let's, let's give the microphone to Terry. Oh, you're muted, Terry. Okay, thank you so much, Oscar. Um, so my name is Terry Yenike. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. So I joined Andela in 2020, this year, 2022. And um, currently I'm a talent network member. So I worked, a bri I worked briefly with a, a client of Andela in the tech, I mean, in tech finance. And it was a great experience for me. So currently I'm, I'm more like, I do more of technical writing now, trying to pass my knowledge and trying to give back to the community in, in the little way I can. Yeah, thank you very much. Teddy, thank you very much. And well, uh, let's get started with our panelists and the reason we are here today. We're going to be talking different topics. Uh, some are going to be like uh, uh, going to be addressed for all of, all of the, all of our members. Um, some other are going to be like addressed specifically from from other ones. So uh, why don't we start uh, with how was your career before going into 100% remote work? Like we're talking about like, we're talking about how to go and work for global companies, but we, we wanna have the perspective on how it's like, how it was like before. And I wanna start it off with you, uh, Terry again, because you were the, the last one with the microphone. So let's take advantage of it. Um, um, so um, before I started with, like working remote, so mostly I was like working in the wellness industry, um mostly like in e-commerce industry like in the gym so i worked in the gym for a brief for a brief time and during that time i have to be in the office like 24 hours like om almost the entire day so i i service mostly uh, clients and people that come to the gym and 
I was not like really like enjoying the process of going to work every day. So I needed something extra to occupy my occupy my time, like learning some new skill and trying to boost myself in whatever way I can to make sure I, I like I get this remote opportunity. So last year, 2021, I got the opportunity to work with the educational ed, 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 technology company, and that gave me some opportunity to like see how work revolves around remote and people and everything and it made me also like learn better and appreciate what people have been doing in the past and yeah i think it's a great way to actually like help yourself like um, in terms of commuting you reduce that commuting like traffic you don't have to face traffic and or you have to spend time with your family and you have a greater like work-life balance your health is guaranteed when you are not like going every day out and yeah that is what i just feel about question oh. thank you awesome thank you terry well let's go with you Sahid. like how, how was the work environment like well when you when when before you you had to explain like, how many years before like how, how many years have passed since you started working uh like when remote like before going remote like all right thank you very thank you very much oscar so um i started my career about 10 years ago in the, in the investment banking industry and um, was 100% um, uh, in office and uh, gradually I, I, I transitioned into hybrid work um, in 2015, that was about seven years ago and I, at that time I was working in the e-commerce uh, space and then eventually in the digital agency space. So while I was um, doing that, I was basically doing three hours, uh, three days a week um, in office and then two days a week Uh, remotely, uh, it was um, it was fair compared to the experience earlier. Um, it was uh, although the challenges of uh, Lagos are still uh, like things I had to experience the issues of traffic. You know, we had to leave home as early as 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to be able to beat the traffic. Um, I, I had to get home late in the night, like 10, 11 p.m. as well because of the traffic. So it was quite stressful in the in in terms of you know um, the traffic. You know, moving around. And also even the risks of moving around, uh, and it was quite expensive as well because um, while you are moving around, you might have issues with your vehicle. Someone might, you know, you know, might might hit you. Some different things happened. So the, I I saw that as 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 a big distraction, especially uh, for someone who works in, um, in 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 my space. So, but um, after uh, and the, um, after the, uh, uh, gradually, I started transitioning during the COVID-19 period, the company I was working with was um, working remote at that time. So I gradually started, work, uh, you know, we started transitioning into fully remote. Um, but after the COVID um, pandemic in 2021, um, we still worked hybrid a little bit. And then gradually, uh, I transitioned fully remote uh, at Andela, into fully remote at Andela. So Andela was your, your, your catalyst to going into 100% fully remote? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's good to hear. And and now, uh, Rizwan, why don't you un, un, unmute yourself and tell us a bit, like, the type of company you used to work for, like, before going 100% uh, remote and the benefits you get out of it? Yes, thank you again, Oscar. So, uh, as mentioned by Sahid, before the COVID-19, I was also working uh, fully on-premise in the office. And... Uh, obviously, commute was one of the major things. Other than that, uh, I think working on premise was good, and I only had one chance to uh, work from home during one of my recent, uh, one of my past employments, and that experience was really good. However, since COVID, I not only got used to do uh, my uh, task and my work, work from home. But the best part for me was I really enjoyed my uh, second child growing. I saw him learning how to crawl, how to walk. And that was really an amazing and enjoyable experience for me. And uh, when, when this uh, COVID situation got better in our region as well, and some of my uh, friends or colleagues have started going back to office, I always was wondered how would I do that because my child was so attached to me. Hmm. And uh, when uh, that, that, you know, uh, motivated me to look for some uh, completely remote work. And I'm really 
I really feel lucky that I landed on Angela and now I work completely remotely. I can spend more time with my family. And uh, other than that, obviously, I am working with now uh, a, with a global team where our team, uh, the people in our team belongs to 14 different time zones. And it is really an amazing experience. And uh, still, we, we are able to catch up with each other and we are able to deliver the work. So before and after, uh, you know, before joining Andela, though I was already uh, working in remote mode for more than uh, one and a half year. And uh, so transition to Andela was not uh, very different or difficult for me. However, now I really love this experience and I guess I cannot uh, work again in on-premise form. Well, that's 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 quite a statement because you know we are looking for more opportunities and we are working for getting more opportunities for remote workers uh, for or yeah. for people who want to join to remote work. So, I we, we I hope we can keep to the promise on on, on that and you can have like uh, that you can that 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 dream accomplished. So, Hannah. Hannah, give us your perspective on, 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 tell us a bit more because it's very interesting from your end because of the part that you want to be talking about. So yeah. what did you used to do for like uh, when you were, uh, before going to fully remote? Yeah, so I, I, I just remembered one funny experience I had while, while working um, at a physical office. So I was working as a web developer and the commute to my office was around an hour and I was using public transport. So during the back and forth, um, the first week was okay. Then there was one week, I remember I woke up really early and I was like, oh, this time I'll make sure I'm in the office so early. I got there and there was a power outage. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> after, after making all the effort and just making sure I'm there on time. So um, I had to go back home because yeah, there's no way I'd work without power at that time. And so it became a game of, the next few weeks, finding out is there power before I get all the way to the office and find there's no power, then I have to come back. There's once I was on my way back and the boss called me that, oh, power has come back, now I have to go back. And it was crazy. So uh, I think that's one thing I don't miss about <laughs> working at a physical premises because right now, um, when I'm working at home, I can decide to choose, like, do I want to work here in the house? Do I want to work at a shared co-working space? Do I want to go and work at a cafe somewhere? Um, so it's up to me to decide um, where I'm flexible at that point. And um, just maybe another experience is that when working at, at an office, apart from the commute, uh, one, one other thing is just being able to, um, like when once you get to the office, you have to also now just come to make your mind um, shift to now, now you're working. Then when it's time to leave, you have to also shift your mind to now, now I'm leaving the office. But when you're working at home, that that time of adjusting is shortened. So that's one thing I like about working remotely. And and that's a I think that point that you're like, you know, touching at the end, I think it's a good segue into into our next topic, right? Because we wanna we wanna talk about like working styles and 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 and, and how you prepare yourself for, for that, right? So like uh, uh, the next topic is gonna be around like, uh, how was your first experience working fully remotely with a tech company, right? Like how do you, how, how, like here we, we could be talking about things that, that what are the challenges like when that you encounter going from, you know, like working at an office with, with, with a certain timing and the, the commutings, but what was the, the challenges of doing it, of actually going to your home? Right or or yeah. how do you prefer to work? This is very related to 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 what you were saying on 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 that. And why don't we just start with you, Hannah, and talk and we go deeper a bit deeper on on that topic specifically. Yeah, um, uh, thanks for asking that, Oscar. Because yes, I've been working remotely for the longest time. Uh, it's been over four years now. But I remember once COVID hit, I found myself overworking and. Wow, why was that? Because I wasn't able now to separate this is work time, this is family time, this is um, time to just be be with other people. So because COVID made, made sure that everyone is just indoors at the whole time, there was, no, there was no easy way to separate that. And what I found that would work for me was when it's work time, I would take 
I'd take my work laptop, uh, sit in the study room and work there. Then when it's time to just be with family or just do other non, non-work related things or not use the work laptop because that would mean I'll get <laughs> easily tempted to continue working, right? So I, I think that's one challenge, like even I would say many software engineers face when they're working um, from home because when you're working on a bug and it's not resolved, you want to just keep working on it. Like you, you, do, you don't want to take a break, but now that's, that's how you end up overworking. Um, another thing is if the flexibility is really, um, really helpful because now you get to like to determine which times you're, you're spending time with family, which times you're spending at work. And for, for example, when I work in the company that the time zones are different. So let's say, for example, the mornings become yours, then the evenings become for the work. So it's really easy to just even plan around your time. Like this is the time I'll go grocery shopping. This is the time I'll go spend time with family or, or yeah, have meeting, other meetings that are work related. Yeah. Yeah, flexibility and possibilities, I think, are the, the side guest of all of this, right? Uh, Rizwan, like, like people are asking around there, they're like how it's like for working multiple time uh, zones and from Pakistan. And, but like, tell me, like, what is your approach on work on a daily life, right? Like, uh, like how, how do you do it? How, how, how is, and how was your, your, the original question? How was your experience working, like going fully remote, like, like going, like avoiding the commuting, but you, you experienced some challenges as well, right? Yes. And uh, as I mentioned, my recent em in, in my recent employment, I uh, got the opportunity to work remotely very first time in my career. And uh, it was really good, this transition. As, a, as, as our whole team uh, was already uh, very gelled in and people and client all were very cooperative and accommodating. So when uh, it came to work from home and work remotely, we became even more proactive. We, we became even more punctual and more cautious about the meeting and about uh, getting the things done. So it, it was really a very positive experience in my opinion. And uh, we, we were uh, more convinced that we have to, you know, when you are in office, you are, you sometimes get a little casual. You sometimes, uh, sometimes the meetings or the discussions with colleagues get prolonged, but in remote, uh, mode we were always very focused and punctual so that really helped us to work more efficiently even this is what i say and uh, since then in in my current experience the things are uh, again the same and uh, you know in, in my opinion uh, working remotely made me more efficient worker more efficient work and we're not talking about the other side of this later but uh yeah i think that the 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 productiveness increased and, and and very aligned with what uh hannah said about like working a lot as well right like i think we we could be also like some people like i can include this uh, include me on this like we could be confusing productiveness with uh working extra hour right uh and that's that's a dream of the of the of the boss but we need to be looking out for our mental health as well so i think like you know trying to find balance as well uh and sahid i don't know what 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 can you what, what do you tell like is it better like do you like we're talking we're preaching we are we are we are we are like really enjoying the the remote work but uh is it better to work remotely for you has been better uh and 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 you know what would you change to the current like uh, and the, the current way of doing it like what what will be better do you do you have any idea on, on on that regard okay thank you oscar so um personally for me um working remotely has been a blessing in the sense that um it has actually cut down a lot of uh, fats in terms of um, uh, mental stress physical stress um uh, uh wasted time uh and uh, for me, um, the major challenge I had while I was transitioning into fully remote with the tech company um, was uh, basically trying to strike a balance between work and uh, personal time. Um, I used to be someone who, because of my um, many hats in my previous role, um, I used to um, work overwork, you know, into the night and, and the likes. But um, while working remotely, um, I've been able to take more personal responsibility and you know strike a balance especially in a, in a company that has a very good work culture 
um, strike a balance between work and personal time and um, plan up, uh, uh, appropriately. So I don't just work into the night. I don't just work anyhow. I, I actually have specific time blocks that I work um, in now and I, I, uh, I focus more on productivity and efficiency rather than just working for long hours. Um, uh, another um, um, thing that I've, uh, I've experienced working remotely recently is also having time for other things outside of work. Um, now I, 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 can, I can pay attention to some of my hobbies because of the flexibility, because now I focus more on efficiency, not just working for long, uh, working long hours. Now I can actually, you know, pursue uh, some, you know, hobbies, things that I, I have interest in, uh, and, uh, you know, in my leisure time. I, I can also, I also have more, more time to pay, pay attention to my physical well-being. You know, I have more time to work out, I have more time to do things like that, rather than just work, work, work and um, you know burn out so that's it, it, it's, it's been a, it, it's been an awesome experience for me and uh, i would always choose remote first anytime yeah and also like while doing, loving what you do and uh, you can get confused uh, or mixed on 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 what is work and what is not right like or it's even the comment down below the comments like like i love my work and and you know uh, I, i usually use it like i get confused about it so yeah i i feel your pain hit <laughs> cherry Terry, tell us your perspective. What are you? How was your first spring working fully remotely? Right, like what, what were the challenges and and your your preferences as well? Um, so for me, because of the country I live in, Nigeria, so it's peculiar. So the thing is, the light issue is one of probably the challenge you have to like try to sort sort yourself with because you have to like buy throughout well, and on your generator data, you have to like spend a lot to actually like be online, like no, don't, don't experience that lag. And it's pretty, it's pretty much like takes a toll on you if you are not like getting the right incentive from working. So if they're not like the salary or something is not like encouraging you, get like fatigued and you'll be like, is it, is it really worth it to actually like put all my resources into this? But for me, what I really like benefited from this whole opportunity of working remote is like it's rewarding. I tend to like to tend to upskill myself in various ways that I've never done before. And it's like I, I, I just enjoy the process because I have more time to myself and I can actually like brainstorm of my own ideas and think of how the possibility of solving a challenge. And if I'm like if I experience a, um, a good good block, I can isn't like ask colleagues and everybody is like easily like willing to help and this is one of the benefits not going full and um, going fully remote and yeah it has been a blessing for me and I'll I'll choose it over going to the office any day anytime. Okay, okay. Well, seems like we're sharing up and 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 favoring remote work. Um, I've been doing it as well for more than two years because I started off like before the pandemic hit but that's my experience and that's uh 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 like you know like not everyone can do it but i i think like and, and since you know i'm a not non-technical you know i'm part of a marketing team here so uh i think that that's a good transition into talking with specifically with hannah uh, uh i would love to ask her or ask you hannah about what what it's like to go from non-tech tech right to tech in to get a technical background that i think your story is very very inspiring for some of the people are commenting as well on on you know like not being a software developer like there are two options like you can try be a remote working not continuing not being a, a, a non-technical uh non-software developer kind of person but what 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 how, how was that transition if you can tell a bit about that story uh for you and mm -hmm. also what advice would you give to women entering tech today Okay, um, so uh, I'll just give a brief summary of where I started off. So in my undergrad for uh, university, I studied actuarial science. So uh, by the time I was graduating, I knew I wanted to land into tech. So the first thing I did was as soon as I finished my coursework, the four years, I signed up for a, a short diploma course where I was just learning programming skills, and the basics, um, learn, like learning how to use Java, learning how to use MySQL and uh, just basic operating systems. So for me, that was a good way to get introduced into tech. And then after a while, I now specialize into Android development. 
And for me, that was really interesting because I was doing that part time as I was working in an actuarial firm. So doing that on part time, uh, like evenings, and then also sat, uh, my weekend, like Saturday mornings, it really helped me to get more confident in how I'm going to transition into tech, like b- before applying to my first job. And uh, one funny story I always give is for my first job as a web developer, I showed up with my laptop, um, told my future employer that this is what I'm working on. I had no portfolio. I had no, um, like I didn't have much. And because I showed them what I was working on and they, so that I understood what what I'm talking about, that's how I got the job. So that's one thing I always encourage, like other people transitioning. You need to show projects that you've worked on. You need to show, um, maybe even like some of the skills that you're good at because your your employer won't know that this is something you're passionate about if you don't show them. And one way you can do this even online is by having a portfolio. Um, you, you, can, you don't have to host it like with the paid platform. You can have, have it uh, on free sites, for example, as well as Git, something like GitHub. Just have a link where you can share as you're sending your CV that I'll tell them, oh, here, you can look at some of the work I've done. And that way they can get uh, to see what you, you're good at. And then for women, especially in tech, I would always say that you'll always be the minority when you enter a team. You'll find that there'll be two, two ladies out of maybe the whole team or you'll be the only one. And this is something that is slowly changing. I'm happy about that. Um, like in the company I work for right now, uh, it's a, more than 50% are female engineers. And that's really something that is rare, but I'm glad that many, many companies are now embracing more, more women in tech. Um, and something that you need to be aware of the tech community as well is that you always have to keep upskilling. You always have to keep learning. You always have to keep taking up courses just to improve yourself. Um, it's not like what I learned, I remember in 20, 2012, 2014, is no longer relevant right now in Android, for example, because we are using a different IDE. And so if I if I chose to say, oh no, I don't want to learn something new, let me just stick with what I have, I wouldn't have I wouldn't get a job at this point. So you need to be able to be aware of, of what's happening in the tech world. Um, and one way of doing this is keep in touch with people in the tech community. Um, there's many networking events, go for them. Um, they won't hurt. <laughs> it was really hard for me at first, I remember, but it's been for me uh, a place of where I've gotten mentors, gotten mentees, and yeah, that's something I would want to advise with many women in tech. And I'm always reachable. You can reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, yeah, Twitter mostly. LinkedIn, sometimes I'm not so good at it, but you can reach out and I'll be able to help where I can. And just want to thank you for your answer, but not just for that, because you, you just made a good segue into uh, what are we going to be talking with Rizwan, which is community. Community for me is very important. It's the reason we are doing these events, and there's a reason, it, like, we are now doing this when it, it, the, the web events, like, you can use the, the, the chat tool in order to talk and get to meet other people. But there are certain instances of, of, of that, that, that communities are unlocking from a lot of people about that community helped me a lot and i know Rizwan one has great stories to tell us about like how does involving yourself in community whether if it's as an as a as a community leader or organizer but also as a community participant just going into the events and talking to people and get to you know find out like what is happening in the world what are the new things that are happening in terms of software development or any other related team right so Rizwan, one please enlighten us yeah Thank you so much, Oscar. That's my favorite topic. And uh, uh, as it's, I think uh, it's an African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that's true with the community. Community really helps you go far in your career, go next level and go above and beyond. And uh, since uh, I realized about this like six or seven years ago in my career, where I got an opportunity to work in a company where there were technical communities, there were in-house technical communities. And that was my very first experience where I was part of a QA community and I learned from other people. I shared my knowledge. There were regular community meetings, technical talks, and that really helped me enhance my career, my expertise uh, in, in very 
short time. And uh, eventually there was a time when I was leading that community, that in-house community. So since then, I, I never stopped. And I always love to be the part of community. I like to build community, like to communicate with others. And those communities, either they are technical or non-technical, these communities definitely uh, help us grow and learn new things and, uh, you know, upskill ourselves. So similarly, in Andela, you, you, your chances of being the part of very fascinating communities are endless. Currently, what I am experiencing, we don't only have and uh, Andalan community for the technical skills, even we have multiple communities, but also the client with which I am engaged. There are also multiple opportunities where I can learn new things and I can upskill and we have internal communities in that client as well. So definitely as uh, it is also said, if you are the smartest in a room, you are in a wrong room. So you are always in a right room when you are uh, the part of Andela or when you are the part of community because there is there is always someone from whom you can learn and and it doesn't matter it, it doesn't limit it about that uh, you can only learn from a person who is more experienced than you or who is senior to you you definitely can learn from anyone from juniors from from even freshers because they are very enthusiastic and uh, uh, what they have uh, they are you know more well versed with new techniques, new uh, technology and uh, new per with, with, a, with a new vision and with a new perspective they are. So you can definitely learn from them. And this is only possible when you are able to give them confidence and you are, uh, you are able to communicate with them and there is a positive healthy community activity. So that, that's the thing I really love to do. And as uh, uh, another aspect of uh, your question is like I'm currently leading uh, the community Andela community in Lahore in Pakistan as well. So this is also a phenomenal experience for me. The objective of that community is uh, though non-technical. However, bonding with the people and uh, guiding them about Andela about the other problems. Uh, to, to, to get their issues resolved, to help them, to guide them and answer their query is, is the thing I really love to do. And, you know, uh, managing or building community is kind of my second nature. So I, I really, I'm really loving this experience as well as I got this opportunity here in Andela. And on technical side, as I already mentioned, definitely with community, you can grow uh, immensely and very quickly. And, and it, re it really helps you up, upskill yourself so i think that pretty much summarizes your question well well i always love the the topic of community like I, I i come from community like i'm here with you now because of community and 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 i think one of the most thing the, the, the thing that most resonated of what you said to me is like you can learn from everyone and I'll be doing here a favor to communities by saying this. It doesn't matter if you are you are you have been one year on the job, right? Or or even like you know, starting to code or do the thing that you like, right? Because communities are not just for coding, but are for many things. But uh, if you just have one year of experience, six months of experience, raise your hand and 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 say, I wanna give a talk, I wanna give a five-minute talk. Like, you know, communities uh, are looking, are, all, are always looking for content and content coming from you. It's like, I once, I once, once was in a, in a meetup for a Colombian community in, in Medellin, if I recall correctly. And, and, and there was like this, uh, it was a, a, a woman, uh, uh, she was just like, she, she started coding like one year before she gave that talk. And I was amazed on what she was saying because people were engaged, you know? There are some things like in communities, there are some like different types of, of personalities in which people is like, like oh, I'm the master of this and whatever, but they will also miss what they were saying because they, have, they were having the perspective of fresh, uh, a fresh couple of eyes, right? And, and that's something that we tend to forget once we are 10 years on, on, on what we do. So 
you know, seeing other person saying how that person is learning a new framework or whatever, even if you don't have that experience, don't feel bad about doing it. Like people is open, like community should be open. And, and, and that also segues as well into, into what I want to be talking with, with Sahid on the, on the topic of like, like we, we talked with Hannah about like non, being non-technical and converting one technical and that drives you to go into the remote world. We just talk about how communities enable people into learn new things and learn more things and keep you updated. But I think with yeah, Sahid, we can, we, can, we, can, we can do the case on, <clears throat> you can take advantage of what, what is happening right now uh, uh, on 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 going fully remote and non being technical still, uh, you you the, I mean Sahid is technical right but but, but he's doing non technical job right now as a as a very important part which is agile uh, project management Sahid I've talked too much please just let me shut up completely. <laughs> Thank you very much Oscar. So um, basically I when I started my career I well, I started off as someone who. Uh, was very curious, someone who always wanted to learn, who always wanted to know uh, different things uh, around tech and solving problems, basically. And I started off basically with an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and at that, at that time, while I was still an undergraduate, I was um, freelancing, web design, uh, SEO, and the likes. And um, as time went, uh, as, as, as time you know went by, I was able to bring together myself and a couple of uh, friends, uh, you know, going back to the subject of community, uh, we didn't have a, you know, a formal community at that time. So we were just able to you know, come together, think, think of ideas, work on things. Even though those, most of those projects were not successful, um, we, we, we at least we, 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 we tried out different things, um, both from the technical aspect and the non-technical aspect. And that allowed me to taste a lot of things. It allowed me to taste the technical aspect. It allowed me to taste the business development aspects, the, the growth aspects and all. So this set me up for my career while I was, um, while I was still an undergrad. And eventually uh, I was able to flexibly uh, meander across different um, spaces in, uh, in tech. So um, I, I, I didn't go in uh, fully as uh, a, 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 a dev or something, but I was able to uh, continue, continually learn. You know, I was able to um, upskill myself. I was able to know a little bit of everything, understand SQL, understand web development, um, understood the processes, and still able to bring this knowledge together and then be, be able to solve problems you know, for the, for the, for the clients or for the employer. So um, one of the things that uh, you know, I would say helped me in uh, going fully remote, um, being a non-technical, primarily non-technical uh, professional technologist is um, first of all, learning, learning as much as possible. Um, the beautiful thing now is that there are lots of opportunities for non-technical professionals um, for instance the growth marketing or growth hacking is, is one area where you know you need you, you, you need to have not just digital marketing skills but you also need to have some some tech skills data analysis skills and like so you know being hungry to always want to learn being always hungry to always want to um, balance both your technical skills and your non-technical skills for instance if you are into um, customer success or customer service um, le learning about crm you know um, get, getting your hands on crm tools testing and playing with things you know helps to actually build yourself up and setting and, and set yourself up for remote opportunities also building a portfolio um, is very important because i didn't wait until um, an opportunity came to me i started off as a freelancer and started doing things you know working on websites different projects for even friends and i was able to use this to build my portfolio to get my um, first set of uh, roles and then eventually i was able to build my portfolio over a period of a decade um, in my previous role so um, while i was working i still had projects that i was working on i still had things i was doing so always constantly collaborating with others very important um, being hungry to learn being curious always wanting to know and at the same time you know working as a t-shaped professional you know going deep on some things and then going wide on a couple of things. That's one of, one of the things that has actually helped me um, to be um, in a better position to um, transition into a fully remote tech job. I hope I've been able to answer your question. And I think that, that addresses some of the comments that are happening right in the chats. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I just got a cough attack. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think that uh, answers to some of the people that are looking up, like asking like, how, how can I, you know, you, I mean, we're gonna be addressing that later, but I'm gonna give you to you, Terry, because <coughs> I cannot talk right now. Uh, uh, we go to our tech question, which is 
which is more surrounding, and I think everyone can segue into it and start talking to you if, if you want to after Terry finishes, like give your opinion on, on how, 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 how can you, uh, one, take full advantage of the talent network and that, that your answer is going to address some of the people's question. How, how, how is it? Like, how, how is the technical part? Like, how, how, how do you, how do you, like, especially, Sahid, if you want to go jump in later about it, like, how, how is, like, uh, jumping into, going through the process on, 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 on being, on being, you know, accepted at the talent network? Uh, how, how, how is it, Terry? Um, so for me, so what I, I would like to start like this, like preparation meet opportunity. So when I got in into the talent network, so um, everybody has mentioned it on this call, trying to say you have to build them, have a portfolio, a project. So, um, so like the project, like what really helped me because when I first got in my first interaction with the client, I was asked about whether I knew my technical whether my abilities for the technical skills were actually like proficient, which I did, the coding test, I did it, and all those things contribute to everything that will make you be accepted into the talent network. Another thing I would like to like say to, to probably like beginners or juniors that are willing to come in as a talent network is that you should try to build your skills or skill yourself. And there's one thing that Andela is already doing, the Google Andela and Google Africa Developer Scholarship. I think that's a great opportunity for you to like leverage on it and actually like come in and learn new tech skills that will actually like make you better and be a better programmer in future. Because this is these are these are skills that are every company in the world is actually like wanting people they want people to come in and actually like build products, build services and all whatnot. And for the experienced hires or people that are actually like more experienced in this thing, there's also like you can mentor. You can actually like they are writing opportunities in Andela that you can actually like do, to actually like expand your net, your network and knowledge to other people that are willing to learn tech skills. So everything is actually like there's a, there's a wide array of stuff you can do. So it's not just limited to one specific area. So I would advise everyone to like take advantage of what Andela is offering and actually like go in and go well, it's, go deep into it and actually like explore everything and. I think everybody will come out better if you can do this um, um, small, and if you can actually like take this advice and make yourself better in, in the long run. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And I think Hannah, Hannah wants to jump in as well and tell us a bit about how is her experience as well. Um, yeah, I was just going, I was going to just uh, like talk about what uh, Terry was mentioning, how when he applied, um, there were several questions he was asked. Um, that's something that that is, is common in tech is the interviews are hard. That's not that's not a lie. It's true they are hard, and uh, I'm seeing people come uh, writing in the chat that oh I've tried this one time but it wasn't successful. I remember for me before I joined Andela I tried twice, and I was about to give up. But one thing I'm learning in tech you just need to get better at it. Take every inter interview opportunity as a learning uh, as a learning process. Because one time it'd be asked something that you had no idea about, and then you learn, oh, this I need to study for this for the next time. And the next way how I was able to manage was being able to get a mentor, someone, for example, who's already in Andela or another tech company, because they've gone through several interviews, right? So they know what some what are some of the questions that interviewers are looking for, what are some of the things that you need to work on as you're studying because it's it's a wide array of things to study but you can be able to narrow it down when you have someone who's been there before so yeah just take advantage of yeah t um, having a mentor as well okay okay well yeah that's another perspective and well that i think that's in terms of like the the content that we have for today uh that's that's all, all it i don't know if any one of you want to add something but if not we're going to uh, 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 to our questions and answer uh, space here. Uh, let's link up the chats that you have been doing it with like with comments about what do you feel like. Sheer up to Hana, Rizwan, Zahid, Terry for the time they they put into into like you know we, it, it was not just like hey come here join me. We had like many meetings meetings before in order to put this up, and they are giving away your time. So just cheer the chats for for them and 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 let them uh, let them feel your love, right? So so 
but here the reason why you're here and we uh, uh, I, I want to invite you all uh, to follow us on our social media channels you know in Facebook uh, this is Andala on LinkedIn uh, as well Twitter and Instagram we are there and now we are going to uh, question to your questions I will try to address as many as possible uh, but the first one is going to read one uh, the question for Riz one that was around here. What is it? Uh, oh, my, oh, yeah. From Marium Amir. I, I hope I am making uh, good justice to your to the pronunciation of your name. But Marium is asking, uh, how different is to work from Pakistan with timings that are that start late and end after midnight? I think he's looking out for your personal experience in this regard. Yeah, in fact, uh, you know, uh, here in our country, there are some organizations which are working with the clients belonging to some odd time zones and uh, working with the same client remotely is uh, at least with one good difference that you, you don't have to think of the commute once your uh, day is ending according to some, some other time zone. So uh, currently I'm working uh, with a US based client and my day starts in the evening and I end up working late night and uh, I'm uh, I, I have I, I don't have to worry about reaching back home from the office if I would be doing the same uh, in some uh, physical office job so this is one of the main and positive difference in my opinion and I hope Mariam also uh, knows that in, in our industry now the time zone is not uh, considered as a barrier Obviously, people are working from different time zones and they manage to attend the meetings and they manage to deliver the work and they manage to uh, obviously accommodate each other. Okay, I hope like uh, that answers your question, Mariam. If not, leave a question, leave a, leave a message on the, on the chat so we, we can see we can address it. Now, we're going with Malik Saim. Uh, it's a question specifically for, for Sahid. How do you how do you prepare for agile project manager to pass the Andela test? And if you can recommend any sites available to prepare for, if you have a, if you have an answer, right? Like you don't have to have an answer for that because these are impromptu calls uh, questions, and like sometimes we're not prepared. Do you have do you have an answer for this again? or? Okay. So uh, basically, um, I relied mostly on my experience um, for the interview. I basically related my experiences, but um, I always, while I was transitioning to Agile about five years ago, I was able to leverage resources. Um, some of the resources that have been helpful, you know, I YouTube, I, I just go to YouTube, search for things, read more about things. And then also for, for, for someone who is actually focusing on um, specializing in agile um so, uh, there are certain courses on linkedin learning that you can actually take the one the most important thing about agile is developing the agile mindset because it's not it's, it's useless to actually implement agile if you don't actually have an agile mindset which is totally different from the waterfall mindset so um the first thing first you know youtube uh, on linkedin learning you have you have courses on agile mindset you can actually take those courses and then you could also check out um youtube for resources and then um uh, you could also take one or two certifications from maybe um, certain uh, certification platforms which um uh, could be um you know available online um, i don't want to mention any right now so um you know, that's basically what i recommend you know and um if you have any questions uh, i'm sure um there would be opportunity for that later okay thank you sahid uh, there's a question come. I think it's a very interesting question, unless this can be addressed uh, by by anyone here. Uh, but Barbara Ojur uh, is asking, like, what about mentally? Uh, uh, what does remo working remotely affect your social being and mental st state? It can be positive, or it could be negative. Like, is there is there is there a, a, a you know effect an affection that you can wanna want to share? Because also there's a bit of a kind of a personal question as well. Not, not anyone. Well, from my end, I can say like uh, sometimes I I, I miss uh, uh, 
seeing people. I'm trying to find other ways to, you know, to interact with, with other human beings apart my my kids that are around the house sometime. Uh, you've seen it, like with people that have calls with me have seen them like uh, in the background. But but I, I try to go to the gym and do exercise and find out people. I got try to go to restaurants, but like for me, it's it, you, 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 we need to get different kinds of interaction with people. And I think Sahid and Hannah, Sahid's uh, raised his hand before. So, Sahid, please. Yes, from a mental health perspective, I, I, I can understand um, that being, um, being isolated or being um, a, uh, indoors for, 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 for a while can actually have um, a negative impact. Sometimes you tend to feel lonely, sometimes you tend to feel, tend to feel isolated. Although um, one of the things that have actually helped is the fact that um, I work in a very um, uh, interesting uh, environment where the culture is very positive and, um, you know, I don't feel it much, but from a physical health uh, angle, um, we're taking a walk um, uh, irregularly on a daily basis, you know, during my uh, break times it's, has, has been very helpful, um, taking some fresh air and also um, I using my weekends, you know, maximizing my weekends to go out, meet interesting people, you know, have wonderful um, times, and uh, you know, with people I care about, um, has been very helpful as well. And um, you know, I I I maximize my weekends to the fullest. I no longer just stay indoors and work all weekends. And I think that has helped me mentally in the setting and um, you know, getting prepared for the next subsequent weeks. Awesome, thank you, uh, Hannah. What is your opinion? Yeah, um, yeah, mine is going to be quite short because you you both said most of it. Like when you miss that uh, human aspect, like just interacting with another human being, one way is like you mentioned, like going to work at a coffee space <laughs> because there'll always be people there even if they're not talking to you. Um, another way is what uh, Rizwan is also big about. For the general community, they'll always have meetups. And so that's one way of getting to meet up, meet up with other people and you can even have... Um, I, I normally call them work dates where you're both working on different projects or maybe different clients, but you're in the same space. So you've gone to maybe sit at a co-working shared space and when you need to bounce off ideas, you, you have someone who you can reach out to. Yeah, that's one way I go about it. But it's definitely something that is a challenge when you work remotely because you no longer have that consistent um, meeting of people like in an office space. Yeah, yeah and... and uh, you want to uh, add up, uh, Sahid, or you just keep kept your raise your hands raised from the previous response? Ah, okay. So, well, there, there's another question. Uh, this is uh, 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 from Jean Claude Gombanero. Uh, Gombani, Gom, oh, I'm sorry, uh, and it's related. It's, it's, it's similar. We talked about mental health, right? On, on working remotely, but I think we can address the, how can we sh share knowledge? Like how did you do in order to, sh to better share knowledge? And this will reply to another question around there, which is about the language barrier, right? Like uh, we're talking with people with different accents, with different, uh, uh, even words that they use on a regular basis uh, that can be uh, Trump into sharing knowledge. So. Do you have any comment or on how how what are a good practice on how do you, if you want to make sure someone understands what you're trying to say to them like how how do you do it do you doc use do you use documentation or wikis or or uh, if you can share any any good practice is anyone here because for me for me it's more on 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 how to how to how to document stuff right like like uh, for Jean Claude, like for me, it's uh, uh, documentation and 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 having wikis and having tools that allows you uh, uh, to 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 communicate you communicate yourself on a on a on a asynchronous way, right? Like you don't have to be having meetings all day because you have to disadvantages, right? One is like face to face interaction is very hard on Zoom, but also uh, like you know uh, being um, Talking, uh, talking too much to one person, and also giving, having to to use a spontaneous. Uh, this is a hard word, right? you know. Like I would have written it 
faster than this. But a spontaneity, like being spontaneous, right? It, it's also like harder, like you have to address questions. But when you have time to really document stuff and, and address the question in a more thoughtful way, with, with more time on a document, right? And you and you and you and you're very, very and very articulate, you can articulate better responses like in a written response, like in a written format. That that helps everyone. If you so if the I think it's not just documenting, document is very important, but having those documents available for, available for everyone and having a structure on 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 how the, the knowledge is on those documents, on those wikis, I think it's important for, 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 for knowledge uh, sharing basis. But that's my perspective. And I hope that I, I, I was able to, 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 to answer your question here. And we are reaching the end of the conversation. Um, I don't know if you have any final remarks from, from my end. Uh, it will be just to Join Andela. Uh, try to uh, fill out like uh, uh, the form, and and if you get a John, if you don't get an answer, perhaps it's, it's it's a matter of time you will be getting one, because you need to apply to this talent network. Like this is a, a, a talent network for people that are trying to their best and and, and getting into going to a remote world. Uh, if not, leave us a comment on our social media that we just share or. Here is my email. Like just ping me an email, and, and I'll be trying to to address and help you. And but I don't want to leave bef uh, uh, before thanking you, the audience. I know some of you are working because this is multiple time zones. So some of you are at your home. Some of you are currently working. Perhaps you are at the reception of an event and, and listening up this in the background. We say hi to you and we say thank you for the time you put in uh, on, on coming into here. Hannah, Sahid, Terry, Rizwan. Thank you very much for all the time and your thoughts. Uh, uh, we really appreciate it. The community appreciate it. And this is a recorded event. So you will be finding it in your inbox in 24 hours and also in our YouTube channel, which I encourage you as well to look in at for it because we have a lot of content as well down there. Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, see you in, a, in one month. Bye.